Hello Mila, hello Jack. Hello everybody else who's watching. Welcome to Storytime with Grandad. Today's book is from Willow the Wisp and it is Halloween. Hello, I'm Willow the Wisp. Did you know that on the eve of Halloween all the witches get on their broomsticks and fly about all over the place? Well they do. And Halloween also happens to be evil Edna's birthday. I remember one particular particular Halloween in Doily Woods, when Mavis Cruitt decided to have a party. I was just drifting along when I overheard Mavis planning the whole thing with some friends. It will be super, said Mavis to Arthur. Carwash, Twit and the Moog. We'll have a proper Halloween party with masks and a hollowed out pumpkin and everything. I could hollow out a pumpkin, volunteered Arthur, licking his lips. We caterpillars are renowned for hollowing out things, especially pumpkins. All right, said Mavis. Then they all rushed off to get ready for the party. Just then, evil Edna came stamping along. Well, as I have said before, Halloween was also Edna's birthday. And if there was one thing that Edna liked to do on her birthday... It was to be beastly to people. Imagine, therefore, her dismay when she couldn't find a soul about. Where is everyone? snapped Edna. How can I enjoy my birthday when there's no one to be beastly to? Then Edna stamped off, looking for a likely victim. Well, night time came and Mavis and her friends were nearly ready to begin the party. Arthur had made a Splendid job of the pumpkin. He was looking a little fatter than usual, having gnawed his way through a whole pumpkin in one afternoon in order to hollow it out. Are we all here? shrilled Mavis, looking round. Oh dear, no. I can see we are not. We've forgotten to invite Eva Edna. Invite Edna? cried Arthur, simply horrified at the idea. Well, it is her birthday, said Mavis. And we really ought to give her a present. A present, said Arthur. What's Edna ever done for us except turn us into nasty, horrible things? Why give her a present? Well, said Mavis, I thought that if we were terribly nice to her, she might be quite nice to us. You never know. So it was agreed that they would at least try Mavis's idea and twit was sent off to invite Edna to the party. The next thing that had to be thought of was Edna's birthday present, and Mavis suggested giving Edna a witch kit. You know the sort of thing I mean, said, a said Mavis. A black hat and a broomstick. No witch should be without one. And where, said Arthur, are you going to get a witch kit? I'll magic one, silly, laughed Mavis. Now, where's my dear little wand? Then, as if by magic, Mavis's wand appeared out of thin air. Now, said Mavis, giving her wand a twirl, here goes. Well, for once, Mavis managed to get her magic right. First time, and lo and behold, a witch's hat appeared, shortly followed by a broomstick which flew round and round in circles until everyone felt giddy. There, said Mavis, proudly admiring her handiwork. Now remember, everybody, my magic only lasts as long as people are nice to each other and think nice things about each other. So be very nice to Edna when she comes to the party, otherwise my witch kit will simply disappear. At last, everything was ready for the party, and Mavis told everyone to put on their masks. What a gruesome lot they looked in those ugly faces. They were ugly enough to frighten a ghost. A few minutes later, they heard footsteps stamping through the woods, followed by a familiar voice that screeched, So there you are. Stand by to be changed into frogs. It was Eva Edna. Oh, Edna dear, cooed Mavis. Before you turn us into frogs, may we give you a little birthday present? Humph, snorted Edna. Oh, all right, what is it? It's a witch kit, said Mavis, pointing 
first to the hat and then to the broomstick, which was now hovering just above Edna's head. Oh, goody, cackled Edna. Just what I've always wanted. Now I can fly about with all the other witches. Then Edna snatched the hat, jammed it on her head between her aerials, and with one leap she sat aside the broomstick. Now, said Edna, taking a few turns around the tree trunk to get the feel of her new broomstick, instead of changing you all into frogs, I shall cast a spell so that you can stay as you are forever and ever. And with just two crackles of her aerials and a fiendish laugh, evil Edna took off into the night. That was kind of Edna, said Mavis. How comforting to know that we will stay as we are from now on. Wait a minute, said Arthur, sounding a little worried. I can't get my mask off. It seems to have grown on me. Oh dear, wailed Mavis, trying to take her mask off. So has mine. And so have ours, cried Carwash, Twit and the Moog together. Meanwhile, Evil Edna was having a lovely time flying about on her broomstick with all the other witches, and every now and then she chuckled to herself about the lovely wicked spell she had put on Mavis and her friends. But little did Edna know that far, far below, Arthur was thinking some very unpleasant things about Edna, for Arthur had quite forgotten that Mavis's magic lasts only for as long as people are nice to each other and think nice things about each other. And Arthur certainly wasn't thinking or saying nice things about Edna. That rotten, ungrateful old natterjack, said Arthur, hopping about and trying to take his mask off. She's a double-crossing, shiggling old grouk. Well, Arthur's angry words were scarcely out of his mouth when Edna found herself in mid-flight with nothing to fly on. Without a moment's warning, the hat and the broomstick simply disappeared. Ah! shrieked Edna as she fell through the air like a stone. Bump! Ouch! cried Edna, landing none too gracefully on her head a little way from where Mavis and the others were standing. I'll bet that's broken her aerials, said Arthur, and serves her right. Well, laughed Mavis, it has certainly broken her spell. Look! The Halloween masks had completely vanished. The end. Goodbye, Mila. Goodbye, Jack. I'll see you soon. Goodbye, everybody. Bye.